Hello guys, King Happy here, and today we're doing episode 4 of the Redstone Tutorials. Today we're focusing on pistons and, in particular, piston traps and piston secret doors. We're not going to be doing everything to do with these today. There isn't, well, there's too many to fit in one episode, so I do want suggestions on what you want to see next. So here, I'm just going to show you an example of what you can do with pistons. So let's move over here. Pistons can be used to manipulate objects very easily. You can move blocks around like that. It's a very simple application there. You can use them in ways like T flip flops. I haven't shown you this yet, and I will in future episodes. You can have it so if you have a piston, say this block is the piston block, then you have a wire going across here, going to a lamp. When you want this block there, to move across, so the piston's behind it, push the block to there, it then breaks the circuit, and then if it moves back, it fixes it. So there's all sorts of things you can do like this sort of thing, but in that way. But today we're going to look at each one of these little traps or devices or doors individually. But first we're going to go through them once each to show you what we're doing going to do today. So first of all, this one's just a simple one. Piston opens. The most simple trappy secret door you can get, one piston in the floor. If you had the floor down, you'd see it. You have to have it in a corner, basically, or on the side. Not very discreet, pretty boring. So, we will go and go through them in detail later. This one is a timed secret door, and it's a side wall double door. It says in double high. So this one, it fully automates itself. It's on a longer timer, so you have time to walk through, plenty of time to walk through of course, and it's set up with a timer there. We will look at the timer separately in a minute. This one is a same as the first one over there, but there is no visible circuitry. Here is the button, and it works in the same way that this door works. It's a double piston array, so there's three pistons in this one, um, moving doubly at once. So here, it's the button. You can have the wall in if you wanted. And this one, as I'm on the 1.4 update, you can use this as a sensor. So if someone is there, you can hit the arrow and they'll fall down. The same way as you can have this input anywhere you wanted. So you have the button miles away, over there, you could have it you know, wherever you wanted really. So you can use it as a trap. This one is a double opening door. I also had one of these here, so I'll put that back there. And let's say there's people at the end. And four opening doorway. Now this falls down only like two blocks, but you can make it fall down 10, 15, 20, all the way down to bedrock if you want. So you can put lava at the bottom, you can have arrows at the bottom, you can have whatever you want. And this one, I've only dropped down a couple. So when you do go down, you can see the pistons and things but there's nothing you can really do about that apart from having really really complex arrays of pistons but there's no need for that in this sort of thing so this one's there's a trip wire to it, this is a double input so you can have more than one input to these things and this one you walk over and the pistons go so it's a nice way of doing it just walk over and through you go so nice little trap thing, not that obvious Pist um, trip wire are quite hard to hide but if you have it in the dark and different stone and stuff, it is quite easy to hide them. And this one is a bit of a special thing, and we'll show you that in a minute. So, here is the timing circuit that I've used in the door one, and this is a very nice circuit that I've used in all sorts of pistons, mob traps, timers for water circuits and things. This one is a button, of course. This basically, you can if you don't understand this, don't worry. All this bit is a switch. This row of repeaters here are the timer. So depending on how big you have this, say we just put them all down to 1, so it's a shorter delay. So that's 8 ticks basically. When you push the button, it will go on for that many ticks. So I've got a piston there and a lamp there. And then, if you want to make it longer, just ramp them up. So this is now on 4 delay each as in four ticks. So let me go again. Yep. Longer one. 
this isn't going because it's not actually going straight to it. So that's just a delay circuit. Fairly simple. You'll be really careful with how you do this bit here. As in, this bit's the output, this bit's the input, this is the reset, this is the timer. Okay? And as I said, always the map is always on download. And this one is a special one. This is a quite fun thing to have. And um, if you want to trap your friends, and um, here we go. I'll just show you first. I'll go into game mode zero for this. And this looks like a nice tunnel. Looks fairly pretty. Lovely lights, isn't that nice? And then oh well then you get suffocated and we just change the game mode onto hard as it was peaceful and we uh, get killed quicker and this is, this is an obsidian chamber so there's no way they can escape and they die of course so it's a a trap now let's change the game mode back so all it does is detect rails basically and then pistons on it so we have a quick look on this one, we'll just work our way back here it will now stay up there for five minutes we've got a skeleton in there oh, I was on hard mode, sorry there we go and I'll just have a quick look here and uh, they do glitch out so all this has at the bottom is a block with a track above it so when it's on sensor track so when the sensor track is activated like it is now as the piston is out, then it will crush them, literally suffocate them. Here we'll show you the circuit. Very simple. It's on there for the detector. Redstone wire goes along here, turns on the piston. If it goes off, but at the moment it is glitched out, so you can't actually hit the minecart. It's a problem with 1.3 slash 1.4 at the moment, but it would still despawn. So you come up here, and as soon as it goes with this pressure plate here, they are pressure plates basically it activates this and pushes the block out in front this is important because if it didn't have that block there you would actually go over the gap and then slow down a bit and then keep going so you don't want them to do that you want them to get stuck so that's a nice little trick there and uh, not really relevant to today but it's a way of using pistons to do it this one is the double one as you've seen now double ones are quite complicated to work out but as a basic principle, uh, we will see soon. So I'll just go over the general thing of this and then we'll show you the very, very simple example over the other side. So this one, input goes in. This is a double input, so it can go from the tripwire across or from the button across. Just be careful when you wire things that they don't connect to the pistons or a one block connects to the pistons because you'll set them off as well. This one here is an inverter signal comes down, gets inverted, so it's off, then it goes on and it comes down here. This goes to the piston array, we'll just try not to break any pistons here. So here the wire comes down, activates the bottom pistons bottom pistons are the ones that hold the floor up basically and then these other ones are the side ones so just a simple array that go into there and the same way as the bit over there, it comes around here and does the same thing and it's also mirrored on the other side for the other side so you've got four pistons on each side and then four on the bottom now what happens is these pistons will be deactivated as in this whole powered circuit gets inverted when the button gets pressed so this will go off these are on the shorter delay than these so when pistons move I have shown you before I think but I'll show you again if I put a piston here and put a block on it and then activate it like so if I get another piston and get another or any piston, doesn't really matter what and we we'll just move it like this if we turn this piston on let me move this one here Ooh. here we are if we want to then move this piston so what this works as is there is a block here see so that's our floor which is looking on a side view at the moment and we'll look at this one here as well so this is the floor what we do is bring the floor down first and it's actually a sticky piston so that's why it doesn't move that one so the floor moves down therefore there's that one deep hole in the floor 
nothing else, so the floors move down one, and then we have the same thing for these. So these are side ones, we're just looking side on. These are both activated, and then, oh, at the moment they're standardly activated, as you see. Then, as the timing circuit changes, so we'll just go from start, it's like that at the moment, the signal gets switched off, this one gets turned off first because this one is on a one tick, these ones are on a three tick, it's important that is. So this one goes off first, brings the floor down, these ones then get turned off, brings the side in. So then there's a f two by two gap in there for you to fall through. And then as the button is only on for a certain time, so it's on like here, it's only on for when you stand on it, as soon as you move off, it'll go back, it's it on, off. So this hasn't got any timing in it, unlike the one over there, but I hope you get that bit. Like I said, you don't have to have it only too high when you go through it. And these arrays you can make bigger than, oh, you can make as big as you want really if you can work out how to do it. So this one just goes down two. You can make it go down further so they can't actually touch the pistons at all if you want to have a trap. But a secret door, they're fine like that. I'll just change the time. See how long I've been going on already. Over here, I just need to check that this one still works the same because we hit it. I think I broke this one. Ah, there we are, that's why. Ah, there we are. See, this is a very important thing. You have inverters here. So, if you ever get stuck so the whole thing's working the way around, look to see if you've managed to put the inverter in or not. So, here, the signal is on. So this is the basic part of the one over there. This is the double piston array on its own. So when the signal gets pushed, it gets inverted. Once this is off, it will come down here. This one is on a three timer, this is on a one timer. The one timer gets turned off first. The block gets moved down. Then these ones deactivate and pull them across. And then when the power comes back on with, because the inverter is then inverted again, because the button is no longer pressed, so the input is then off. So at the moment, it moves like that. And then as it comes back, these ones go first, and then that one goes. So it works out very well. We're going to the next one. This is the door. This is the most complicated one I think there is here. It took me a while to make visible so that you could understand it. So the button goes here, as you saw. There's a delay on it. You can make the delay as long or as short as you wanted to. So here, it's a bit complicated to see, but I'll make it simple for you. Okay, I need to put that block back. Oop, there we are. See here, I'm powering that block there. The only thing you can see here is that redstone torch there. You could move this to be over here or something, have the button somewhere else, and just have a solid wall so that you couldn't see it at all. But it doesn't really matter that much if it's secret to begin with. So as you press it, these ones get pulled back. It's the same array as the ones over there, but we're looking this way now. So, it's the same principle, four pistons pulling two. But on here, when the signal turns on, it will do the array, and this one works out that it moves, powers the top one with this block, powers the bottom bit with that block there, which is underneath that one there. And this is so that there's a nice tunnel afterwards. This signal comes downwards, and then is inverted. That's important. Comes here to the timing circuit. It's the same timing circuit as the one on the end. So if you get stuck with this bit here, just go look at that one. The signal comes up, comes here. Now how the signal works here is this block gets powered, therefore this redstone torch gets unpowered, therefore this one gets powered. Complicated, I know. Turns the signal on, then it holds it on, so this one gets inverted here. So in this case, instead of holding it on, it holds it off. Because at the moment it's on, and then when it's off, it pulls them back. And then we want it, when it's finished, to then power again, and then release them. So that door closes behind you. You can have it so that the door would open, and then once you've gone through, you'd click the b a button again to close it. But we've done a timing one, so it's more complicated, obviously. That's the timing bit you've seen before. A little shorter timing than the other one, but... You can do whatever you want with that. In my wheat farm tutorials, I have 50 four-step repeaters in them to give enough time for water to dissipate. But you can do whatever you want. So that's how that works. 
hopefully we've gone over the other ones in detail enough so that you understand that one. Hopefully I'm not rushing too much. Like I said, if there's any other applications you want for these ones, any other types of doors, no floor doors, um, hidden staircases and things, I will be doing if you want to. Um, animal crushers, animal burners, that sort of thing. Just say and I'll do them. This one's just a simple one, isn't it? So if you don't understand any of the other ones, this is your first principle. One piston, moving there, powered by redstone, with an inverter. So the standard thing is on, when it's pressed it goes off, but only momentarily because it's just on a button. So, I hope I haven't rushed across too fast for this. Um, it's hard to know when, what kind of type of speed I should be going at a few lot. But, this is enough for this episode I think. I would love to hear any suggestions that you want to see for the next one. I was planning to do things like T flip flops, um, floor doors as in hidden staircases, so fully closed doors so that look like this from the surface and then retract and go downwards. Same principle as this one basically but it would be fully in the floor and then a staircase would come up so where this has left a gap the other one would then bring a staircase back after revealing the outside um, which is quite cool and uh, very secretive and you can make it very nice so I'd love to know what other suggestions you want and what other things you want me to show you but as always I've been King Happy and the world is on the download in the description so hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time guys